Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a paper server in Minecraft 1.17.1. Paper is basically a more efficient version of a vanilla Minecraft server, plus it allows you to add plugins, right? So if you don't want to add plugins, paper is going to stop lag on your server. Not all of it, right? There could still be lag on a paper server, but it's going to make controlling the lag a lot easier. You can control entities, you can load chunks more efficiently on your server, and on top of all of that, paper is just much more efficient fixing a lot of other little things that you can't necessarily control, but just inefficient in normal. Minecraft servers. Paper just fixes those in the background without you ever having to worry about them. On top of that, you can add plugins to a paper server. So it's easy to add plugins to a paper server. And we actually have a video at the end of this video or in the link in the description down below that shows you how to add plugins to your server if you do want to do that. But before you can, you will need a paper server. However, before we do start a paper server, I do want to mention that this is not a 24 hour server. It's only up and running when your computer is up and running, right? So that means that if you turn your computer off, your server's not going to be working. If you're not actively kind of like managing your server, looking at it, make sure it's all working. Your server could end up messing up and having issues. It's also hosted on your own computer's hardware, meaning you can have lag on your server caused by your own hardware. While PaperMC is a very, very efficient, you still have to worry about having a modern CPU, right? CPUs are very, very important for Minecraft servers these days, and you're going to need a decent one. You're also going to need to be able to actually have a good internet connection, right? Your internet connection is going to be what this is hosted on, so you're going to need at least 10 by 10, 10 upload and 10 download, if not a little even better than that to run a paper server. A lot of people are like, my friend keeps getting disconnected while playing on my server. That's because your internet isn't good enough, unfortunately. Speaking of your internet, it also is hosted on your own internet connection and your own IP address. And anyone who gets that IP address can do things like hit you offline via a DDoS attack and find out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. Because of this, it's only a server meant for you people you trust. It's not meant to be a public server. However, what if you want a server that's up all the time? Or what if you want a public server? Or what if you want a private server and you don't want to have to worry about the hardware? What if you just don't want to have to worry about the hardware at all? What if you don't want to have to worry about your internet connection? What if you just want the easiest way possible to set up a server? Well, in that case, that's going to be Apex Minecraft hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour Minecraft server or private Minecraft server, your choice on Apex, ran on Apex's hardware, meaning you don't have to worry about your own hardware, ran on their internet connection, meaning you don't have to worry about DDoS attacks or anything like that. That's their problem. And last but not least, what if you just want the easiest way possible to set up a server and want 24 hours, seven day a week support? So Apex has 24 hours, seven day a week support to run their servers. All of this is solved by Apex. All of this is possible at Apex Minecraft hosting. We actually love just Apex so much that we have our own server, playdartbreakdowncraft.com on them. And again, they have amazing support at Apex. So 24 hours a day, seven day a week support. If you have any issues, they are there to help you out. You can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server up and running. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get your paper server up and running on your own computer if you don't want to start one with Apex. To do that, you want to go to the second link down below. That's going to take you here. This is actually our text tutorial for getting a paper server. We do sometimes go a little bit fast in these videos because they are very, very long videos. This is probably nearly 20 minutes long, so it's very, very important that we go relatively efficiently through it. However, sometimes going at your own pace is better, and that's what this text tutorial is for. Once you're here, though, no matter what, you want to click on this Download Paper MC button. That's going to take us off to Paper's official download page. And once we're there, we're going to go ahead and download the 1.17.1 version. Seems our paper servers are taking a little harder longer than normal to load today, so I'll do a quick jump cut until it has loaded. There we go. Paper is now loading in, as you can see, and automatically we do have 1.17.1 selected. Now what we want to do is go ahead and click on this version, basically, download button. Now this has 100 after it. It could be 1,000. It doesn't matter what it is. For example, on 1.16.5, we had 780 versions. So whatever this top button is right here, go ahead and click it. Doesn't matter what the version is, just go ahead and click that. And then automatically, paper is going to download in the bottom left. As we can see, we have paper 1.17.1 there. Then go ahead and press the keep button in the bottom left, and it's going to save the file on Google Chrome. If you need to save the file on Mozilla Firefox, you'll do so in the center of your screen. It's 100% safe to download paper. Now if we minimize our browser, here we have a file called 1.17.1-100, and basically that's going to be the 1.17.1 version of paper and the 100th update of paper. Now that could be a later update. If yours says a higher number than 100, that is good. That means more bugs, more issues, more things have been fixed. So anyway, if this isn't on your desktop, it's going to be found in your downloads folder. So go ahead and click the little Windows icon to the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen, but click on that little Windows icon on the top or bottom left of your screen, type in downloads, you have this downloads file folder here, click on that, and in here you will find paper. Go ahead and drag this to your desktop just for ease of use. Now, speaking of your desktop, we want to go ahead and right click on our desktop, create a new folder, and then we want to title this whatever you want. I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com because that's our own incredible 1.17.1 survival server. If you want to play on a survival server the easiest way possible, truthfully, play.breakdowncraft.com is the way to do it. But nevertheless, once you've got your folder created on the desktop, you can name this whatever, drag and drop the paper file you downloaded into this folder. Then go ahead and open up your newly created folder on your desktop, and in here you will have paper. 
Now to go ahead and get this started, we want to make sure that we have Java installed. Now I would recommend for most people to go ahead and install Java because the new version of Java, Java 16 came out. So unless you've watched our video and started a 1.17 server in the past, you need Java. And to do that, you can find it in the description down below. It's this link right here, how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. And it specifically shows you how to get Java 16, something you need for paper and Minecraft servers in Minecraft 1.16. At that point, you should be able to continue with the tutorial. However, some of you will still have weird icons, meaning you want to have Java icons on your files. To fix that, you can run the jar fix. This is in the description down below, and it's going to link all the files on your computer, or all the jar files on your computer, back to Java, right? Go and link those jar files and Java back together. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And here we can go ahead and right click in this folder. This is our, our folder that we created, and we dragged and dropped our paper server software into it. Let's go ahead and right click, create a new text document, right? So right click, new text document. You can leave this title, new text document, and then open it up. In this new text document, we want to go to the description down below and copy one of these codes, right? How much RAM do you want your server to have? One gigabyte, two gigabyte, three gigabyte, four gigabyte. I'm, for this video, I'm just going to do one gigabyte, right? Because I'm just me. I'm going to join it. I'm not going to run any plugins on it. No worries. However, if you want to add plugins, you want to have more than one player, you're going to need probably at least two and then so on and so forth up until 10, 20 gigs even for some huge servers. But for now, we're going to go ahead and paste in this right here, which is going to be one gigabyte. Now make sure it starts with Java, right? And ends with pause. And again, Again, these codes are in the description of the video down below. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Now on this new text document, we want to click File, Save As, and then we want to save this with the title, right, the file name, run.bat. Then we want to change the save type as to all files. So again, file name, run.bat, save type as all files, then go ahead and click Save. We now in the background have this new run.bat file. To run this, we would double click it. But before you do that, you want to come up here, click on view up at the top, and then you want to make sure file name extensions are checked. If there is no check mark here, if it's like this right here, you want to go ahead and make sure you check that, right? Turn on file name extensions. Sometimes you will have to click it twice to make sure it works. So there you go, file name extensions are now clicked. Now we want to go to the paper file we downloaded, right click on it, rename it, and then just title it paper. P-A-P-E-R, just paper.jar, exactly like that. If you don't see .jar at the end, that means you didn't turn on file name extensions. And again, click on view at the top and turn that on. Now we can go ahead and double click on the run.bat file. And when we do, our server is going to start up. However, it is going to fail. The reason for that is we need to agree to the ULA, but we needed to generate the ULA file to do that. Now I will say, if you do have any issues with your server at any point in this video, we do have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to fix a broken Minecraft server. This goes through some of the most popular and common issues that you can have with a Minecraft server. And overall, it is great to look through, even if you do get your server set up correctly, because we still have a lot of issues you may have in the future, and it'll help you save time then. Now we can go ahead and go back here, and we do see that this has failed. As you can see, failed to load a ULA. Press any key to continue. We're going to do that. It's going to close out of that. But most importantly, we have an EULA.txt file here. Here. Double click on that and then go ahead and go to the EULA.txt file and boom, there we go. If you agree to the ULA and also agree that tacos are nasty. Okay, wait, tacos are nasty and the best food in the world. Wow. <laughs> Let's go ahead and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true here. That means that we agree to the Minecraft ULA as well as this statement here, which I don't, I don't necessarily agree with, but I think if we just delete it, we'll be fine. <laughs> you don't have to do that, by the way. But anyway, the most important part is changing EULA equals true. Make it all one line exactly like that, and then do file, save. Now we want to come back over here and double click on the run.bat file again. And a, with the EULA agreed to, this will go ahead and start your server right on up. I'm going to do a quick jump cut until the server is right on up, because unfortunately, I do lag when starting a server. But when I it is up, I will show you what it looks like. So there we go, just like that. As you can see, we now have done. That signalized the server is open and basically working and live. Now, here's the thing. At this point, your friends can't join your server, but you can. So I'm going to show you how to join your server real fast. To do that, we'll need to open up Minecraft 1.17.1, right like so. So let's go ahead and do that. Get Minecraft 1.17.1 open, and I will meet you on the main menu to show you how to join your server. Your friends won't join this server your way, but you will always join your server this way. Let's go ahead and show you how. Before we can actually join it from the main menu, though, I realized we need to get the right like IP addresses to join it. So to do that, let's just minimize Minecraft for a second. If you come up to the left hand top of the screen, the top left hand of the screen up there, or the bottom left hand of the screen, right top or bottom left of your screen, in either one. Uh, for me, it's in the top left. For you, it's probably in the bottom left. And type in CMD. Then you want to go ahead and open up the CMD here. And in the CMD, you want to type IPCONFIG. So IPCONFIG, IPConfig, all one word, exactly like that, and hit enter. That's then going to pull up all of this information where we want to go ahead 
ahead and grab two things. We want to grab in Notepad or write it down in a sticky note, whatever. You just need to take a few notes down or a few uh, few numbers of strings of numbers down here. We want our IPv4 address, right? So IPv4 address, and we want our default gateway. So let's go ahead and grab that. Boom. So now our IPv4 address is 192.168.1.123. Yours is probably completely different, but that's okay. That's why I showed you how to get it this way, because yours is probably different. Now for our default gateway, mine is just numbers. However, if you have one that's numbers and letters, get the one that's just numbers. There's probably one under it that's just numbers. Get that one, not the one that's numbers and letters. In my case, it's 192.168.1.1. Right, like so. And now we can go ahead and save these if you want, but I'm just gonna keep them open. Uh, we're just gonna need them here for a moment. Now let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft or Minecraft again. And then from here, we can actually take that uh, that default gateway or the IPv4 address, type that in and join our server. So let's go into multiplayer, direct connection. And then we're gonna go ahead and type in the IPv4 address, which is 192.168.1.123. Hit enter and it's gonna go ahead and log us right on in to our server. We can actually open it up over here and you will see, uh, there we go. We can actually open it up over here and we will see we did join the server and we are online. Awesome stuff, running around looking good. Now, this is how you're gonna join your server, right? You're always going to join off of your default IP address or your default gateway, excuse me, or your IPv4 address. Either one of those will work. For example, if we disconnect, we change this to our default gateway, 192.168.1.1, hit enter, it's going to join the server again, right? Either one of those, your IPv4 address or your default gateway, that's how you're going to join your server. Your friends aren't going to join that way. They can't. They're going to need to join off your public IP address, but they can only do that after you port forward. We're going to show you how to do this, but the reason you're going to join off your default gateway or IPv4 address is because sometimes you can't join off your public IP. That's going to depend on your ISP to do that. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and show you how your friends will join, get your server basically open to the public, if you will. Let's go ahead and stop this. So stop, type stop. Always do this when you stop your server, type stop over here instead of, you know, just closing it out or anything that's going to shut it down properly, save everything, and then press any key to continue. Now, the reason we got the default gateway was not just because it could join our server, but we're also going to need it to port forward. So to do that, go ahead and open up your browser, create a brand new tab exactly like this, and then we're going to go ahead and copy this default gateway. So copy it here and paste it up here where you would normally type in a website and hit enter. When you hit enter, it's going to go ahead and take us off to your router, right? Whatever your router is, it's going to take you there. For me, it's Linksys. For you, it may be something completely different. Netgear, it could be Google, it could be anything, whatever your router is, it's going to take you here. Now you're going to have a login box. That's the one thing that's going to be the same. Your login box is going to be the same. No matter what, you're going to have some sort of login box there. Might not look exactly the same. Yours may pop in from the top, maybe in the center of the screen, so on and so forth. There's going to be some sort of login box there. What do you log in there with? Well, your router's username and password, which you can find in the description down below. This is how to find your router's password. It goes over five popular methods of finding your router's password on the description down below. In this article, I should say, down below, it shows you five different methods. Most people, by the way, find it by method three. So cool stuff there. Now we can then go ahead and log into my router. And once we log into the router, we're going to want to port forward. Now everyone's port forward is going to be different, right? Everyone, except unless you have a specific router exactly like mine, is going to be different, I should say. That's okay, right? We're going to walk you through everything kind of step by step here and make sure everything is is figured out by the time we're done in a way that you know what you're doing. Now, one way we're going to do that is we have another article in the description down below, which is a complete guide to port forwarding. The most important part about this article and specifically this video right up here at the top is it goes over Netgear, it goes over Linksys, it goes over Cisco, it goes over AT&T, Verizon, all the most popular routers out there are on this list. And guess what? Even if your router isn't on that list, you need to watch that video because most of the routers have very similar terms, very similar locations for all the stuff out there. The most popular ones are basically rebranded over and over again with different companies with the same software. So because of that, it's very, very important to watch this video. You'll pick up so much. And then when you get to your router, you're like, this may not be exactly like a Netgear router, but it's pretty close. Or this may not be like a Cisco router, but it's pretty close. And then you'll be able to figure out exactly how to port forward. For me though, on a Linksys router, it is going to be in security. Then it's going to be in apps and gaming. And then it's going to be in single port forwarding. Now for you, it may be in apps and gaming. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It may be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It may just straight up be in port forwarding. It may be in admin or it may be in administration. It may be in the advanced tab. I've even seen it in the admin advanced port forwarding tab before. Again, it could also be in security. It could also be in NAT gaming or NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. There's tons of places. Most of these are outlined in that video, but there's some common terms you could look for in your router. You're not gonna break anything for your internet or anything like that. By just clicking around and seeing what you can find, it is important to, you know, kind of just explore a little bit. Once you do find your port forwarding though, you're gonna have either a add new single port forward button, like an add port forward button like I do, or you're just gonna have a big list like this. If you have a big list, just fill out the first one and then click apply save and you're gonna be good to go. For me though, I have to add 
a new single port forward. Then for the ID or the application name on your port forward, this is just gonna be whatever it's for. For my case, that's gonna be Minecraft. For your port, external port, internal port, for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, port. You wanna put in 25565. So for external port, we're gonna put in 25565. For internal port, we're gonna put in 25565. For external outside port, inside port, anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, 25565 is the number. For protocol, we're gonna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Either way, you wanna make sure both of these are selected. If for whatever reason, you can only select one, do this twice, do it one, with all the same information, just do one for TCP and then make another one and do it for UDP. For me, luckily, I do have both though, so I'm gonna select that. For device IP or local IP, this is going to be your IPv4 address. So in my case, that's gonna be 192.168.1. Dot one, two, three. Now you may not have a device IP, you may have a device list. If that's the case, go ahead and select the device that you're starting your Minecraft server on from that list. Now at this point, your port forward is done, except if you need an external or outside IP. Most people don't, but some do. Luckily, every single one of you watching this video needs your public outside IP address because that's the IP you're gonna give your friends to join your server. So here we can do that by going to the description down below to what's my IP address, and this is where you can find your IP address. Right here it is. For me, the only thing you can see, everything else is blacked out, is the 100, as is the locations under it. But you can see you can get your country, region, city, and latitude and longitude coordinates all from the IP address that you're hosting your computer on. So it's very, very important to only give this to your friends, your family, people that you trust. So anyway, as you can see, 100 at the end, that's gonna transform to later just so you know I'm using the same IP throughout. Now let's go ahead and come back to our router if we do need this over here, paste it in. Otherwise, save, apply, okay, we're done. Now we can minimize our browser. And then once we're here, we can go ahead and get everything set up. So what that means is we're gonna go ahead, start up our server, right? And I'm also going to start up Minecraft. So I'm gonna go do both of those in a jump cut and I'll meet you when the server's up and Minecraft is open. So here we go, as you can see, our server is open, done, complete means it's open. And then we have our Minecraft 1.17.1 open as well. Now we go ahead and click on multiplayer, direct connect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my IP address here or public IP address here, I should say. As you can see, 100 at the end. I can join off of my public IP. You may not be able to, and that's okay if you can't, as long as your friends can join off of your public IP, you can join off of your default gateway or IPv4 address that we went over earlier. I go ahead and click join server here. As you can see, it's encrypting joining server. We are joining on in, and we are now on the same server as earlier. We have our, our piece of grass that we picked up, yeah, or piece of dirt. There we go. So there you have it. That is how you can start a server. Now, for whatever reason, your friends can't join your public IP after your port forward. Most likely, this is going to be due to this right here. This is going to be your how to allow Java through your firewall. Most likely, your firewall is blocking the connection, and this is how you can get it fixed and set up and working in Minecraft for your servers, right? It goes through all that in the description down below. As you can see, nearly 100,000 people at this point get that working. On top of that, it could be a firewall on your router. That could be the issue or an antivirus. Normally though, it's Windows Defender, which uh, is outlined in that description video or that video in the description. Also in the description down below, as I mentioned earlier, we do have this in-depth guide for fixing issues on your Minecraft server. This video is over 20 minutes long at this point. So because of that, we decided to make an in-depth guide over here with a bunch of different issues, 21 minutes in and of itself of different issues that you go through when making a Minecraft server, right? All sorts of stuff is outlined in this video and done very, very in depth to help you fix those issues. But nevertheless, thank you so, so much for watching. Enjoy your paper server. There are so many benefits to hosting a paper server, including your paper.yml file. Go in here, look around, get those settings set up because they are very, very helpful in preventing lag on your Minecraft server. Speaking of a Minecraft server though, check out play.breakdowncraft.com. It is the best Minecraft 1.17.1 grief protected survival server out there. We've also got incredible custom sky blocks. So come play with us. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. I cannot wait to see you online. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown and I'm out. Peace.